Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the Strife X and some complaints and some posts I've been seeing online. And it really didn't come to my attention until someone posted a comment on my video asking why reviewers weren't talking about the blaster eating darts or deheading darts or whatever in their review. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And then I also wanted to run some tests of my own because I didn't mention that in my review. Um, first off, uh, if you're not aware of my review process, um, I use 100% brand new darts for every test, every shot fired in all my tests, whether that's the FPS range, uh, accuracy and precision, all that stuff is all done with brand new darts that have never been shot before. Um, I don't reuse my darts um for these tests so i do go through a whack ton of darts so um that i can tell you for sure is the reason why i didn't come across it is because i didn't shoot a dart through this blaster multiple times during that review otherwise if i if they would have and it would have came to my attention i definitely would have gave that information to you guys however with that information that was provided me from the commenter um and I thank you, by the way, but um, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in a new kind of stress test uh, for my fly flywheel reviews. Now, I don't do typically do a lot of flywheel reviews, and I've noticed that after going going back and reading some of my uh, notes and things like that on past reviews. And um, I'm going to make that make a change to that for sure. So we'll definitely be getting some more flywheels into this into the shop and um, getting those reviewed for you guys. I'm not going to go back too far. Uh, we'll probably do one for like the Mark III and stuff like that and post that and maybe like the Phoenix 2.0 and some of the, you know, more well-named ones. Um, but we're not going to go back and do every single one. We'll try to do them as they come out. So like the Omni and things like that. But going forward for the flywheel blasters, not so much for the Springers, we will be doing a dart kind of test, uh, stress test to see, how, you know, the likelihood of you know your your darts getting chewed up by a blaster if that's the thing you need to worry about because that should go into your decision making when purchasing a blaster you know am i going to have to replace my darts every time i shoot it like is am i only going to get one time out of it or am i going to get six times out of it or am i going to get a dozen times now um the way we're going to test this and the way i tested it today and i feel like it's a pretty good kind of um process now obviously you know this is just one blaster and one set of test uh tests so like take that with a grain of salt but i wanted to give you my parameters and what i thought i i would you know contribute to this kind of subject um and then after the after the fact i'll go over like what could possibly be done in addition to my test or what you should look for you know on your side nevertheless um let's kind of jump jump right in uh what i've done here is i've got four of the well three of the darts i normally test so i've got the worker i've got uh the dart zone ruby and i've got the dart zone bamboo along with the new nerf pumpkin darts as i'm calling them uh, all short darts i didn't have a chance to test the or stress test the adventure force uh ember darts because i'm out of them i literally shot the last group for this review and i have maybe five or six left so i don't have enough to actually perform this test um, but what i've done is i took 20 shots of each of each of these loaded them up into uh, talon magazines and then just ran them through the strife one time these are brand new darts never been shot before they you know are in a climate controlled room when they're stored all that you know every precaution that can be made to ensure that I have a quality first test. Um, so I loaded them up, shot them through. Um, I wanted to give the darts the best chance possible and, and just to prove that the issue is with the strife, if there is in fact an issue. And I shot them against uh, a curtain. So I set up a curtain on my on uh, my light stand or back, backdrop stand um, so that they had a soft uh, stopping point. Obviously, if you shoot them into like a brick wall or a harder surface, something more dense than a cloth, the heads of the darts will show a little bit more wear and break down a little bit faster. I wanted to prove that the strife was the only thing being tested at this point. So that's what I did. So I was shooting about 10 feet into, um, uh, into the actual curtain itself. And then I took, like I said, 20 darts and shot them all through one time. 
Then I picked up those 20 darts and inspected them and then found the one, you know, found any ones that were kind of showing wear and tear. Because that's what people were saying is, you know, shot them through once and they're showing wear and tear. And then sometimes it would be deheaded and things like that. And then after I shot them a second or third time, then they were pretty much useless. So what I did was after the 20 shots, I went and picked them all up and I kind of inspected them. And this is, and I found the all the ones that were showing signs of uh, deterioration or signs of damage where there would be like a fault or, you know, place of place of error or anything like that. And I took those and set those aside. So um, for the, let's kind of go through those, those numbers real quick. So for the uh, pumpkin darts, there was 15 out of the 20 that I shot that were showing signs of stress. And when I say signs of stress, like this, I marked them, this is a number one dart. This has been shot one, exactly one time. And it's showing, it's already showing signs of wear and tear on the head, which has come to be expected um, only because, you know, it's shoot, you're shooting it through concave uh, flywheels. The head's gonna is gonna show some signs of wear. But the one thing that I wanted to point out is where these triangles meet up with the uh, where the triangles meet up with the actual foam. That's where I'm starting to see just a little bit of damage. Like right there, you can see that one nice and deep, right? So I think you know what's happening is you've got these flywheels that are coming in and kind of to kind of picture it like overhead. You know the darts being inserted into the flywheels you know, demonstrating the flywheels will be my fingers. The flywheels are crushing the dart head and basically applying pressure on the top and bottom. So depending on where, you know, this dart enters the flywheels, if it's anywhere close to these triangles, it's gonna start peeling up that connection point is kind of what I'm seeing. So that's with the actual pumpkin darts from Nerf. Um, for the worker darts, I had two. There were two darts, and these were actually the two, uh, that were showing wear, and the um, uh, Ryobi darts, there were three of them, four of them possibly, but three of them definitely were showing wear where they were pulling off of the actual um, uh, grip. And then the same thing with the bamboo darts, I had like two or three, possibly a fourth one, um, but that could have been like factory defect or what, what, you know, nevertheless. So I just chalked it up. There could be a, a fourth in there. Um, and what I've done after that is I took basically the one that was the absolute worst of the bunch. So the one that was the absolute worst that was showing damage of this. And I took that one and shot it through an additional 11 times. So you'll see these ones have, this one's got a 12. That one's been shot through this blaster 12 times, 12 times. 12 times and 12 times. The reason why I did this is I wanted to show you guys and kind of demonstrate what the difference between shooting it one time and what you can expect on the 12th time. Um, now I don't know about you, but shooting a dart through flywheels 12 times seems like a good, you know, a good measure of success. Um, and that's why we, one of the reasons, not why, the only reason, but that's one of the reasons why we play this instead of like airsoft or paintball or gel ball is our ammo is retrievable and reusable. Um, at least it should be. So, you know, for a topic like this where we're, you know, there's complaints that the flywheels are deheading. And when they say deheading, basically what they mean is they've, your dart head is coming uh, out of the actual foam itself and this dart is no longer usable um that's what people are saying when they when they say deheading or beheading or whatever the case may be um so let's kind of take a look at some of these darts and take a look at the 12 shot one and go from there now i do want to mention that out of all the darts that i fired all 20 first rounders and then the four 12 shot darts I didn't have a single dart D head. Like there was not one. The closest one was the the one the the uh, twelve uh, shot for the um, uh, Nerf one. And this is there's a pretty good gap here. Where is it? Like right right there. So like this gap, if you pull on the head just a little bit, you can kind of see that pretty much all the way around, except for this spot right here, it's starting to pull the actual tip off 
So I sure, I'm sure if I shot this through another 12 times, somewhere in between 13 and 24, this, this one head would probably tear off. Um, but for me, shooting a dart 12 times seems pretty legitimate. Um, you know, and to show that kind of damage, like it's not, you know, it's not insignificant, but it's definitely showing signs. That was the worst of the bunch. Um, the other two that kind of stood out were the ruby darts and the bamboo darts. And it's for a similar reason. I think the way the dart head attaches to the foam is where we're running into problems. If you'll notice the, the dart head on the, uh, on the nerf dart is the same thickness or roughly the same thickness as the foam. The rest of these guys, the head of the dart is slightly smaller. That's one of the key differences that I've noticed between the, this dart and the darts that we typically see in our hobby. So, and this is, and this is something Nerf might have to pay attention to for like maybe their Gen 2 or their AccuStrike <laughs> darts or whatever, um, because I don't think this is gonna be a sustainable future for this ammo. Um, at least in flywheels. I haven't had a chance to test these in springers yet, but at least in flywheels, I think that's going to, these are going to create a problem. Uh, so let's go back to the Ruby darts here and you can kind of see the Ruby darts are starting to pull away as well. This is the 12th shot ammo and I'm pulling pretty hard. I'm not giving it any you know additional damage, but you can see there's a little bit right here. And then over here, it's just really starting to tear away. Um, whereas the first one, this one was shot one time and there's a few spots where it might be considered falling, you know, faulting, but you know, for the most part, it's pretty solid. So no deheading there. The other one that showed quite a bit of damage is the, um, bamboo darts. And this is one, this one's kind of interesting because this one shows the damage to the dart really, really well. So this one on the left here is shot through once and 12 is shot through the 12 is on the right. So you can immediately tell the coloring, the discoloring of the head of the dart. Again, going through those flywheels, it's going to eat, it's going to damage the darts when you send it through. That's just the nature of the beast. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we get to the worker heads. Um, but you know, discoloring and showing wear and stuff like that. You can see that the lines in the triangles, especially the top one, isn't quite as crisp. Um, because of the, you know, flywheels are going, you know, RPMs are ramping up and uh, that plastic is melting. That's just going to happen. The other thing that you'll notice too is the, the edge of the dart, uh, the actual foam is not nearly as crisp on the 12. That's just, again, going through those flywheels. It's going to shave off, you know, start to shave off and round off that edge. So you're not going to have nearly as crisp of an edge. Now, the one thing that this dart had going for it is the glue, I think is really kind of holding it in there, but you're just getting a little bit of damage around the outside. And I think that's because the dart head along with the dart head on the Ruby darts is slightly smaller than the dart head on the Nerf darts. So you can tell right here, side by side, looking down at it, how the head of the dart is the same thickness or roughly the same thickness or diameter as your, as the foam. Whereas these ones are in a little bit further, which gives them a little bit more ability to, to take in that crush. And the crush really is only affecting the, the foam itself. Now, I think worker really has the dart scene kind of locked down and that's because their design is superior in two ways. Not only is the head of the dart narrower by a significant amount, right? But the, the dart itself, the head of the dart itself, the only part that's glued in is the stem. So there's a little bit of gap here and that's not from the damage of the dart. That's just the way, like here's a dart that has not been shot yet. Here's a dart, you know, the head of the dart is slightly like protruding out from the foam and the only glue that's holding this head on is inside the foam on the actual like kind of stem or neck of the head of the dart. And that's giving us two advantages. Number one, when the dart head hits those flywheels and it's compressed, it's not pulling 
the edges of the foam and, or I'm sorry, the edges of the rubber away from the foam, they're already apart. They're not attached in any way, shape or form foam. Yeah. They're not attached in any way, shape or form. So when the, you know, dart hits the flywheels and it compresses the head, it, it doesn't do any damage. Now the damage is going to come when, you know, it starts pulling the dart forward and it's basically before it hits the foam, it's giving that a little bit of tug and you can see, that this is giving the there's just ever so slightly a, a tear in that tip of that you know where the the stem is versus this one you can kind of go around and peel back the rubber just a little bit and you can see just a like, right there's a little bit of damage right there but for the most part it's i mean this is phenomenal design and while this design has a a far superior like grouping and you can see that in our review um, going through a flywheel is going to cause a little bit of damage. So, like I said before, you know, people were complaining about, you know, their darts, heads being ripped off and stuff like that. I didn't experience that. And I apologize for not mentioning it in my review, but there's good reason for that. Like I didn't test that now going forward. I will of course do that testing. Um, but uh because i didn't realize that would be you know could be an issue it was not part of my thought process especially with only reviewing a handful of flywheel blasters you know i didn't quite think about that now it's brought to my attention yes absolutely i will be looking at that in the future um so the one thing that i want you to know is if you're actually having issues with this blaster ripping the heads off your darts chances are it's something with the flywheels um so make sure you take your battery out, obviously, first thing. But if you look down your barrel and into the flywheel cage, you can see that the, the two flywheels are concave and they should be lined up perfectly or as close to perfect as possible. You shouldn't have them, you know, kind of lined up sideways because if they're, if they're off kilter, number one, the dart's going to come out all wonky. So if you have an issue with your accuracy or your precision, that's going to be a huge, a huge factor in it. But the other thing is this could be a contributor to the reason why the darts are losing their heads on the way out is if the, you know, if the, if the wheels aren't aligned, you know, it's hitting the edge of one wheel and it's not, you know, it's hitting the, flat, you know, the concave, the, the bottom of the concave on the other one. So, you know, there's more grip on the actual head of the dart first. So that could possibly, you know, be causing the issue. Again, I'm no professional when it comes to this sort of thing, but in my honest opinion, if that's happening, it's probably the flywheels. Um, and who knows, maybe I have a lemon that's not deheading darts, but um, yeah, if you are having that issue, um, head over to, I would head over to Hasbro's website and Nerf has a customer service section there where you can call them uh, Monday through Friday. I think it's Monday through Friday. I'll put the phone number up here. But you can call them and report an issue and i'm not sure what their customer supports like or what their return policy or replacement policy no clue but if you're having that issue i definitely give them a call because this is not a cheap blaster and from what i can tell there isn't an issue at least with mine with deheading darts and like i said shooting darts through 12 times for me is seems like a success like i would call that a successful blaster i don't think there would be an issue with that um, with that being said i think these darts are going to prove to have a lower a shorter life expense expectancy just because of the design of the head of the dart so in my honest opinion they just need to they just need to lift this dart head design because this is just phenomenal at the very least shrink the head of the dart down you know a couple millimeters um but uh yeah being able to shoot these through 12 times to me is seems fine so um, if you're having any issue, definitely check out uh, Hasbro's website and get yourself a ticket created with their customer service so that they can either replace it, send you out a new one. I hope they don't tell you to open it up and fix the flywheels. That's what I'm hoping they don't do, but yeah, I'm not in charge of their customer service. So, All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you leave a comment down below and uh, tell me what you think of my findings as well if you're having some issues. I'm kind of curious to hear from you guys. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.